Welcome fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer1745. We're going to take a look at armored divisions. Um, I may also have been calling them panzer divisions um, because we're looking at them from the German perspective. Now, I have not played any substantial time as Britain or the U.S. to um, go through the full research on them but most and so I a little bit from ignorance I'll admit but most of what we see here is um, as in model names and such are, are for immersion and don't affect the game directly meaning it's not specifically a particular model it's just a general um, tank type that's theoretically the main, not necessarily exclusive, but the main um, tank type in the brigade. And it's based entirely on um, the research that you've researched here. Um, now some of these may be blocked for the AI to, to research some of the guns types here or um, armor types like I don't know does the US not really tried it and you can read some of the stuff here um, whether the US and you can go into the um, EULA code not necessarily block it for the human but block it for the AI so that they don't research things it's some simple things like um, having Switzerland or you know a standard inland um, small country um, not research any Navy because Switzerland and Austria doesn't, and Czechoslovakia doesn't have any um, coastal um, regions. And so the AI won't research navies. Obviously, if you're playing as a human and somehow you achieve that, obviously you can start researching them, but that's just sort of a AI kind of thing. Um, so like I say, this is a, they're general, they're not specific types. Um, they're not necessarily the Panzer II here. Now the photo and the name match up. Um, I don't know how well the details here match to the historical models. If you want to do the historical models, you should go over to RPM. I really like the way... Um, Sagan did that um, so much that I'm a major fan and I've worked on his earlier Bowart Panzers and in upgrading it and I'm a vent image um, contributor to his current Bowart Panzers that means forward Panzers I've been informed in German and his tank models he's gone through to try to um, walk through the not just for immersion but game balance how much piercing or how much armor a particular model of tank as his judgment would have and it's very good it's something I really like it is I think both directions are equally valued for this type of thing you know the well, what if Germany you research better radios than Germany had or what if you research better tank optics than Germany had or maybe jump over to the Soviet Union which didn't necessarily have good tank optics or radios and what you know are you, should you be stuck with the historical um, models or do you want to be able to um, up gun uh, a tank without necessarily up gunning the armor or whatever and those, those are very good you know why should you be um, forced to have uh, historical mistakes if you want to play Italy and I think Italian armor um, was particularly bad well I know Italian armor was particularly bad in World War II why should you necessarily be forced to have the bad Italian armor when Italy did have the technology and had they worked things out with Germany they could have set something up where um, Germany could have come in and helped their industry but it was sort of um, the Italian um, 
the Italian industry didn't want that. They wanted to be exclusively building the aircraft and wanting to be building the tanks. So they did not um, want to import until it was too late. Uh, German um, equipment and also German production methods. At least that's my understanding of it as to the why. But they did not have really good armor. And you're going to say, hey, yeah, I want to play Italy and I want to play with a certain level of historical limitations in that you, you want to base it on their research, but you want to say, well, we're going to not research submarines. We're going to focus on making better armor or whatever and research that up and, and employ that. That is a very valid way of looking at it and wanting to do the what if. The other one is is going with the, the, the tank models that were available at the time, including maybe prototypes that, you know, decision paths they didn't take. And have those as, as an option. Uh, I don't necessarily think that you would be forced to, A, either research all types. And get back to this. In that being, let's say, forced to research infantry support tanks. Um, if you're Britain, which in my opinion had infantry support tanks. And sort of, Panzer IV early was sort of that role. But it's really more functionally used as a medium armor thing but you go hey no I don't want to support you know go down that just because my country did that even though you have the historical models you can go we're going down other history because it also had um, cruiser tanks fast moving non-infantry the Matildas were British infantry support tanks the cruisers were sort of the cavalry tanks as the British looked at them faster moving you go say hey we're not going to re <coughs> research the Matilda line we're going to research the cruiser line and go down that path, but still within the historical models and balancing. Both are very good. Both have very valid things. I sort of prefer the historical models um, with a little bit of flexibility within that, not a rigid one. I know I'm talking more philosophy here than that, and we're also looking at, um, I want to build a, um, either, I, well, Either I want to find somebody who is building and help them out, or I'll build it and try to build a team to build a historical tank models mod, starting with Germany for Hearts of Iron 4. Because since we're now equipment-based instead of unit-based, we can um, step through all the German models. I have good books on all of them that will be good enough for the level of detail needed for Hearts of Iron. To have the full and complete um, German tech tree, and I'll, we'll have to look at their sort of um, upgrade versions and how that'll work and how that should work into it, because there are definitely upgrades within general lines of you know Panzer III. But some things may be a bit more than an upgrade. Some things may be you know a whole new model. We'll see how that works out. But I want to do that and eventually um, spread it to all tanks of World War II. That like I say, it's not you're not forced to build um we can go into the I think it's still here. Um infantry tank. You're not forced to build these. They build a few like we talked about in one of the episodes. Um these big monstrosities, I mean monstrosities in size. Uh tanks have built a few prototypes but they never put them into production have these tanks modeled in the game as an infantry support tank and you can choose to go down that path or you can you know in, as in research that may subsequently lock unlock other things as we we look at it and i can definitely we can definitely look at um some other earlier research and some other tank lines were needed to unlock other things so maybe you would want to research some of these to unlock something else but you may choose not to to um, produce them or you may have decide to choose to produce them just because they produced a few historically you decide yeah we're going to produce a, a couple of battalions worth or no we're not going to produce them and so similar things like in my opinion the German the, the proper German infantry support tank is the Stumgeschütz the Stug Life um, so and you could choose hey we're going to 
produce these because they just because they did it in history, or we're going to simplify our production um, lines and just not produce these because this adds too much um, diversity within the um, production lines, and we want um, simplicity for more tanks, simpler out faster. So you know, have the have a certain player flexibility, but step through all of the the German lines, and I want to build that. So, okay, back to the real purpose of this, and I know I'm just talking on here. I hope it comes under the enjoyable of interesting um, hist history and what else. Okay, so we're going to look at um, Panzer Divisions. And first one, I want to sort of build out a version, not necessarily strictly, of an early, or pre-slash-early war um, Panzer Division, as I understand it, and I think is um, correctly copied by, um, or as reasonably correctly as we can, by Black Eyes. Early Panzer Divisions, uh, other people had inputs, absolutely. Um, Guderian was not, and uh, Quinn, things change. But was not necessarily the person in charge of the the forming um, Panzer units. He was sort of young, but he was the main driver of them. I, I forget who was sort of the official guy that I think was one level above him, but he was the major um, main driving force, main idea guy behind it, and definitely got out there and worked with others. So I'm sure it's it's collaborative force, but. This is it, um, within the 8 Brigade um, limitations we have here. They had um, two Panzer Regiments, each of two battalions, uh, set up. And then they had a um, regiment of motorized infantry with them. And if I'm getting some of the details wrong, I'm sorry, i got to look it up in the book. But it's basically this. And... This was the major hitting power. It was a concentration of tanks in one division. And obviously in the war, um, they didn't necessarily think of them. Well, yeah, Panzer 1s and Panzer 2s were definitely light tanks. They were the predominant tanks. But as I talked in some of the other um, videos, they were training vehicles. Not necessarily entirely as training for like drivers or gunners, but training as in... What does a panzer division do? How does it move? How does it go? And I guess we can click on this just to see what they're... This was what they're doing. Now they're doing mixed support, medium artillery. They don't have the, um, the truck transports here. So, get rid of this. And also that's what you can build as opposed to what is loaded by OOB because early on you don't have all the brigades filled but if you look at some of their early early versions so now we're back to that um this was Guderian's idea it worked very well to me, it's still more or less the ideal of a division, panzer or armored division. There's a few problems with this historically and um, game-wise. First, just get it out of the way historically. Um, did very well in France. It was maybe thought to have a little less infantry than was ideal, but that just maybe. What was a real limiting factor was German tank production. It was not, it was done very, very inefficiently pre war. It was, once the war started, it was getting more efficiency, but it was still um, a lot of, hey, you know, we want. You know, a uh, hundred or two hundred of these tanks in such and such amount of time, and then part way through the production run, well, hey, we've got enough reports back from guys in the field. 
we want to change this and this and this on the tank to make it work better. And so that they would constantly be fiddling with, um, and they did this throughout the war, um, fiddling within even the named models, uh, adding or changing access hatches or um, vision blocks or other little, little things that, yes, they improved the tank, but they would even have tanks sitting out in the yard waiting to be shipped to units and go, okay, we'll send all those guys back into the factory. We're going to update them to the newest version before sending them to the war. And Germans were making tanks to last for 20 years when they barely lasted a month in combat. And that's sort of a problem with the situation. And not necessarily in the quality control realm where the Soviets were probably some of the poorest quality tanks. They loved using American tanks for training purposes. So a lot of the lend least American tanks sent to, to the Soviet Union ended up in training units because they needed a whole lot less maintenance and would have a lot, you know, more miles they could put on in the tank than on the Soviet tanks. So they loved using the American tanks for that and they drove really well and they're really good for training purposes. They preferred the Soviet tanks because they generally had a little bit better guns and much better armor for the actual combat units, but they would exhaust themselves to the point that they would need the tanks themselves, not the soldiers to the need to send the tanks back and have them almost totally rebuilt because of the collapsing uh, mechanics within the vehicle after a while. So they weren't built to last a long time. So um, German um, tank production efficiency wasn't very good. So when they needed to get ready for Barbarossa in 41, they realized after the experiences of France particularly, um, that they didn't have nearly enough panzer divisions. So what they did was remove two of the four tank battalions within a, um, a panzer division and they increased the infantry support. So go, so this is more or less what um, Germany used. And I'm, I have an armor here, light armor and going up, but that's really sort of immaterial. Um, this is what Germany used going into um, the beginnings of Barbarossa. Now, quickly to go back. Yeah, worms. Infantry attachment. Okay, now, game problems here. We have 53% um, combined arms bonuses. We are wasting a slot by having two armored units in there. And I think actually it should be just... And you can see 53, remove one, is still 53. So you're wasting a slot. So that is a bad thing to do because you want to increase your combined arms as much as possible. So going over and if you look here, we can quickly look here as well. Um, this is 64 soft kill. 33 hard kill with a motorized infantry brigade. Um, with a motorized infantry attachment of 4,000 troops, we're at 5327. So we're going down. So the big thing with the unit size is that they. Um, increase or decrease the amount of hard and soft kill not the um and we can see it here let's do this with a regular armor you know we're at 25 percent piercing 23 percent um armor or not percent but 23 points and we go to an armor and attachment it should be okay well it's actually less armor um but um 25 and 20 so it's it's nearly the same and it should be approximately the same um for an armor attachment 
but you reduce the um, amount of hard and soft kill here because there's just fewer tanks. So the big thing between um, the attachment and the primary is the size of the unit, which will affect how many um, overall points you have of, of hard and soft kill. And it's also the size of the unit itself, which how much damage can it absorb? Now this is sort of running long for a quick um, video, but I think it's hopefully interesting enough and worth it to you. So you need to look at that as a critical factor. Now, this is fine for going into France. Um, you got 25% um, piercing. There may be a few heavy um, armored units in either um, France or Britain that may be involved there, but I don't think very many, and I don't that probably should um, be um, should be there representing the Matildas and the Sharbies because the German armor couldn't penetrate it, but it's good enough for that. What it isn't good enough for is on the Soviet front. That just won't do long term. You will have a crippled division. What you need to do is attach either an anti-tank unit, just a basic anti-tank unit, now jumps you up to 26 piercing. Well, 25 to 26, that isn't very good. Hmm. That is not very good. What is a um, tank destroyer's? 25. Now I'm looking at this and I don't know. Now here, 25. Well, in my opinion, that's not very good. I don't know if they've adjusted this. And I'm, I'm doing this on my playthrough version of um, Black Ice 2.8. So it may be different there because these anti-tank rounds should be. And partly I'm going off of history because I'm a, I'm a history buff, obviously. Now, I do know you will see a big difference between light armor. And so light armor without. Um, so it's 25 piercing. The anti-aircraft gun goes all the way down to 16. Um... Tank guns, generally speaking, are not as good as um, anti-tank guns that were mounted on these units. And they may be um, with the um, tank unit. What tank unit is this? I don't want to go just click on the anti-tank unit. Okay, well, they're, they're um, hypothesizing it as the 4.7mm um, check gun here. And this is also the Jagdpanzer, which this thing here, um, they obviously, here's a picture of them using the check gun, and they captured some, and they did use some of that. They did not produce or use that in any significant numbers um, in World War II. What they... I think they took most of the ground units and simply mounted them on the tank on Panzer I chassis. It was a very good gun. Um, what they did, they went from the Pack 36 to the Pack 38, which the 36 is a 37 millimeter anti-tank gun. The um, Pack um, 38 is a 50 millimeter long barrel 50 millimeter gun, and the Pack 40 is the long barreled. Um, 75 millimeter gun, but not the longest barreled. It's the L48 um, gun. The longer the Panther was the L73 gun. So, well, and probably part of what, what we're doing is looking at this at the wrong time. And that with the text. And this is one reason why I've waited so long to make some of these videos. Is... Um, 
if I tried to make them early, you know, in 1936 or 1938, you would not have a lot of these texts. These here, dual purpose um, guns, should be increasing uh, the armor piercing of some of these units because the Panzer IV early on, and I'm a little surprised at what I'm finding here, early on, um, the Panzer IV was a low velocity, uh, high explosive round that was designed not to pierce armor but to blow up concrete bunkers. So it's 75 millimeter round, and it was out of the L. Now the long barreled, the standard long barrel that most people envision on a Panzer IV is the L48. The early version was the L24, and it was that short barreled stubby thing. And for the Panzer III at the time of the Battle of France, it was the 37 millimeter gun. So, and again, as we were talking about um, equipment models matching um, what their effect in the game, that um, 47 millimeter check gun, way better performance than the 37 millimeter gun. Not quite up as to the, the um, 50 millimeter. And the millimeters themselves can sometimes be deceiving because like we were talking about, the the 75 millimeter gun um the l73 gun that was mounted on the panther tank and that really had penetrating power so um the millimeter in diameter didn't get any bigger the um the case behind it got much larger so it moved at a much higher velocity so um the difference between the the 47 and the 50 millimeter gun the, my understanding and I have to look it up in a book to, to see it and I got it here but I just haven't the 47 millimeter gun performed better than the um, the early 50 millimeter gun that they put in the first model 50 millimeter gun they put in the um, Panzer threes it was that was just sort of a temporary fix because they had some they stuck them in while they were still working up and building the longer barreled uh, 50 millimeter gun that became the um, Pac-38 gun. So the, the 47 per performed better than the early 50, but not better than the later 50. So it's sort of right in between for, for most um, performance things. But I do know that as you research text go on, you will need either an anti-tank I do know this because I looked at unless they screwed up something really badly and I don't think they have um, looked at my last playthrough if I had it easy I could show you but I don't um, is um, that you had um, once you get to the Russian front you will need an anti-tank or an anti-aircraft gun in all of these divisions to stand up against the Soviet armor. It is just very necessary. So you'll want that. Now, why would you want a um, any any um, aircraft gun over an anti-tank gun? Well, um, when you're talking about a Panzer division here as we're building them with this limited thing, you already have a lot of hard kill in your armored unit. You don't necessarily have a lot of um, piercing, but you have a lot of hard kill. The anti-aircraft guns don't give you a lot of hard kill, but they give you a lot of piercing. So if you're looking at an infantry division, like we did um, in the other episode, you probably want to add more hard kill as well as piercing, so you'd want to go with an anti-tank gun. So you'd want to do that instead. But since we already have that function here, um, you don't need to do this. Now this is going to be a very expensive division here as we have this at the moment. It'll be um, 38 ICs for 166 days. That is expensive. You will probably want to build a few of those, but it, they're expensive. Now, you look at um, 76 and 70, um, and it's fast. Uh, now it will be adjusted for with the trucks. You'll, you'll want to use trucks or um, half tracks for armored units um, will have various um, speed improvements 
based on terrain types. You'll want to do that. But this is, like I say, expensive. So you can get nearly the same effect by going with an armored attachment. And now you're down at 24 instead of 30, what was it, 38 or 36. I forget exactly. I don't keep numbers well in my head. Um, but you're down at 24 uh, ICs. So over 10 ICs better. So um, if you're, you know, you can almost build four for the cost of three of the others. But, so you'll want to do this. Now, um, it's 65 and 57. It's not as much. It doesn't have as many troops in it, so it won't um, sustain as much damage. But you don't need all Panzer Divisions to be the same. They can, um, and I very much think that you should mix Panzer Divisions up in, in types like that. That will keep that going. Now, um, so there we go. It's 2480. We have an armored attachment. We have motorized infantry. We have medium artillery. Armored reconnaissance, cars, heavy AA, which will get better penetration. Engineers to get across rivers and deal with other problems. Trucks transport and divisional transports. That is sort of a um, weakened, cheap situation. Like I say, I would build some. Now, if you're playing um, with uh, historic units from um, Black Ice, you will have some historical builds as well and that may be enough of them so you will want to build some of these I also like building a few things that are more in the lines of a um, Panzer Grenadier division now remember that was at about um, 24 ICs now if we come over here and go with a an assault gun here and um, motorcycles we have um, now just down to um, 22 just two ICs but you've cheapened the whole unit up you're still rather good here you're gonna you're gonna be um, moving quickly uh, as well you know it's gonna be a very mobile mobile force here you have 41 and this is this is also a very useful thing to look at is how many, um, how big of uh, factor that the, the thing that's hurting you most here, and I like these parts for history is um, this uh, assault guns here. I sort of have a bit of disagreement because the Germans use the assault guns as a substitute tank, so um, it's sort of a philosophical design disagreement. You can look there now that jumps back to 53, so that would be probably better for the extra. Now notice this is still cheaper because we're using motorcycle reconnaissance instead of armored car reconnaissance. So you can look at this as probably your good cheap armored division. I would say half of your division should be something like this roughly. Now I would also build a few with heavy armor. Now that just that one change jumps it all the way to 40 ICs. Um, here at this point it goes up to 34 piercing you'll get a lot more heart attack you will want a few of these these guys partially for fortress busting partially for um, taking on heavy Soviet divisions so basically one you'll want a standard armor division a lot of those can be um, a black ice event given unit but with a full armored brigade Basically this thing, though I would normally swap out the um, armored cars for the motorcycle recon. Much more expensive, but going to hit. It's going to sustain because you have the large um, infantry force, the large tank force. You're going to do that. But because of production constraints, I had to build approximately half of them this way. Almost as good, but in going down 
over, you know, 12, 13 ICs less, less to produce. Still very effective hitting. Will still chew up um, a lot of Soviet infantry divisions. And if you're operating them in conjunction with, you know, the key is not to have all of your good armor divisions in one, you know, your northern um, arm of your attack and have all your bad ones and or just okay ones. These aren't bad. These are just okay. All your okay ones in your um, southern thrust. Now, you want to mix them up and have both. And then have a few um, with heavy armor because you're just going to overwhelm. They will be able to be a, um, a fire brigade situation in that they should... You should either be able to move them um, to contain any Soviet breakthrough. You know, have a stack a bunch of armor. Move one of these guys in there. Along with some other units, but move one of these guys in there. You should be able to stop an attack. And when you have a situation of a... You, know, you need to attack a large Soviet um, concentration of armor. Or you're going into a um, somewhat fortress situation. Having he heavy armor. In there um, I very well make a video covering um, fortress busting divisions though that all that theory and work is based on oh my god's work um, and if you're watching this oh my god you should make a video like this on fortress busting and some other things like that um, that's what you see the best sort of um, unit composition for that to maximize things if you're getting over 50% combined arms bonus, because you notice this is now purple instead of grayed out because um, assault guns. I'm a historic player. I'm not, though, something that wants just what Germany had, you know, exactly or in all, exactly those numbers. No. I want to base it in history with um, some of my... Um, own sort of tweaks to it, but not trying to make out um, something very ahistorical. Um, that can be done, and it's not wrong to do it, just not the way I look to play the game. Hope this helps. Thank you for liking the videos. Please post comments. I Like I've said, I am not at all saying that I'm the last word on what is either the best or you, even the most historical possible builds. Um, with this game but this is how I see it I'd love to hear your takes on it and how you think either I'm wrong or just improvements or whatever you want to look at that so thanks so much thanks for viewing thanks for liking the videos